they mastered the most breathtaking fighting techniques and amazed an audience of millions. But what actually became of the kung fu stars you cheered for in your childhood? From Bruce Lee to Jackie Chan, today we show you what paths the martial arts legends took after their movie careers. Gordon Liu Kill Bill fans know, if you want to reliably knock your opponent out, you should master the five-point pressing heart explosion technique. And Kill Bill fans also know, Uma Thurman learns this wacky martial art from none other than Gordon Liu, who took on the role of Pai Mai in Quentin Tarantino's Two-Parter. Before Liu was brought onto the big international stage again by Tarantino, he had made a name for himself in the 1978 flick The 36 Chambers of Shaolin. His trademark, the shaved skull, also comes from this martial arts film. That he would one day become a gifted martial artist was already clear to Liu in the days of his childhood. He allegedly regularly skipped school to train Kung Fu. After Kill Bill, Gordon Liu experienced his second acting spring so that he was able to enjoy numerous offers on the Chinese TV market. But unfortunately, a tragic stroke of fate befell him in 2011. Since suffering a stroke at a concert in Hong Kong, he has been paralyzed on one side and partially dependent on a wheelchair. He has been living in a nursing home in Hong Kong ever since. Sammo Hung The roles Chinese Sammo Hung has taken over the years remind us once again that we must never underestimate our opponent. Born in Hong Kong on January 7, 1952, Hung always mimed overweight, a apparently obtuse men who then took their opponents by surprise with their explosive speed, mobility, and fighting techniques. First, however, Hung underwent traditional Chinese opera training, an apprenticeship in which students were taught singing, acting, and martial arts, which no longer exists in this form today. During his apprenticeship, Hung met a certain Jackie Chan. While the two were full-blown rivals at the time, Hung was later to choreograph several fights for his rival. He also did this for other notable fighters, such as Bruce Lee, John Wu, and King Hu. Lo Mang Born in Hong Kong on July 23, 1952, Lo Mang is not only a gifted martial artist, but also a talented calligrapher and painter. Fittingly, his artwork often depicts scenes from his favorite kung fu movies. Having trained under the most respected masters in his home country at a young age, Lo Mang's dedication to martial arts paid off when he was discovered by Shaw Brothers, a Hong Kong-based production company that helped the martial arts genre achieve a breakthrough. Thanks to his impressive skills and natural charisma, Lo Mang quickly became an absolute darling of the public. He took on lead roles in some of the most iconic kung fu movies of all time, including The Five Deadly Venoms and Kid with the Golden Arm. Although he didn't do any additional weight training, Lo Mang possessed a body of steel. He was known for portraying the strongest characters in his films, but they were often the first to bite the dust. Currently, Lo Mang is still active in the Hong Kong film industry. However, his acting style now is more comedic. He has also been involved in some action flicks as a choreographer. Jackie Chan Kung Fu, Taekwondo, Judo, Hapkido, and the legendary Jeet Kune Do developed by Bruce Lee. Apparently, there is hardly a martial art that Jackie Chan has not mastered. Born in Hong Kong on April 7, 1954, Jackie Chan was still marketed as the successor to the late Bruce Lee at the beginning of his acting career. However, he differs in one point clearly from his world-famous predecessor. While Bruce Lee always stood as a thoroughly serious fighter in front of the camera, Jackie Chan is characterized mainly by his loosening comedy interludes. As mentioned earlier, Chan was also taught at the Beijing Opera School. In detail, this happened because his parents immigrated to Australia and could not take their son with them. Thus, a daily routine at the academy awaited the seven-year-old Chan, which was characterized by an unrelenting harshness. Students were taught from dawn until late at night. Anyone who misbehaved was punished with beatings. In retrospect, however, Chan stated that it was precisely this harshness that made his latter success possible in the first place. After his education, however, there was nothing to indicate that he would one day become one of the most famous movie stars in history. At first, Chan followed his parents to Australia, where he often hung around in bars and in gambling halls and kept his head above water with jobs in construction. 
Since his work colleagues did not really want to get into the Chinese birth name Kong Sang over the lips, they christened him without further ado, Jackie. While Chan had already appeared in a number of films, he was finally to conquer the hearts of the American public in 1994. After his breakthrough with Rumble in the Bronx, box office hits such as Rush Hour, Shanghai Noon, and Karate Kid followed. In total, Jackie Chan has appeared in more than 140 films, starring in over 60 of them. In the recent past, however, the now 69-year-old has concentrated mainly on the Chinese cinema market. The reason Chan gives for not appearing so often in Hollywood productions is that he likes to present as many different sides of himself to his audience as possible. In Western films, Chan often plays the exotic Asian who prefers to speak with his fists rather than his tongue. Bruce Lee, the man with the death claw, death greetings from Shanghai, and the death fist of Ching Li. Bruce Lee's unique techniques demonstrated in his iconic classic films ensure that he is one of the most accomplished martial arts actors and the greatest martial artists of the 20th century. Born Li Junfan in San Francisco in 1940, he developed his very own fighting style, the Jeet Kune Do. Within the framework of this, Li combined the most effective techniques of different martial arts with each other. In addition to Far Eastern elements from Taekwondo, Jiu Jitsu, and Wing Chun, Li also used Western martial arts such as boxing and fencing. The One Inch Punch and the Dragon Flag are still unforgettable today. Just like the quote, be water, my friend. Li often referred to this element as the universal force of nature. Water is adaptable, intangible, and yet capable of hollowing out a massive stone. In light of this, it seems almost bizarre that the Kung Fu legend may have died from ingesting too much water. As you almost certainly already know, Bruce Lee died on July 20, 1973, at the age of just 32. Previously, he had collapsed during the energy-sapping filming of The Man with the Claw of Death and was admitted to the hospital. There, doctors diagnosed an epileptic seizure and cerebral edema and prescribed the superstar some medication. However, a few weeks later, Lee would pass out after taking a painkiller and eventually die. Officially, he succumbed to the effects of brain swelling that occurred as an allergic reaction to the headache pill. However, a recent study suggests that the brain swelling had already begun before he took the drug. Because Lee consumed far too much fluid, his kidneys were no longer able to excrete the excess water. Bolo Young Even before Bolo Young played Bruce Lee's adversary in The Man with the Claw of Death, he rose to national fame when he won the Mr. Hong Kong bodybuilding title in 1967. After meeting Bruce Lee in a cigarette commercial, a friendship developed between the two, which eventually opened the way for Young to enter the film business. His Hollywood breakthrough came in the late 80s when he starred alongside a certain Jean-Claude Van Damme in Bloodsport. Now 76 years old, Bolo Young last appeared in front of the camera in the 2017 production Diamond Cartel. The father of three currently lives in Monterey Park in the U.S. and says he still does weight training every day. Jet Li In 1998, Jet Li celebrated his international breakthrough after starring alongside renowned Hollywood greats such as Mel Gibson and Danny Glover in Lethal Weapon 4. He could hardly save himself from offers. What followed were roles in Romeo Must Die, Kiss of the Dragon, and The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. In 2008, he again starred alongside Jackie Chan in the martial arts adventure film The Forbidden Kingdom. He mimed two characters at once, the Monkey King and a silent monk. In the 2020 remake of the Disney animated film Mulan, Li again slipped into the role of the Chinese emperor. In 2013, his fan base worried as Li made public his hyperthyroidism. And even though he was temporarily unable to play sports due to the disease, he has since fully recovered from it. Angela Mao In the heyday of Kung Fu cinema in the 1970s, Angela Mao starred in dozens of martial arts films. Born Mao Fu Ying in Taiwan on September 20, 1950, she trained in many different martial arts, including Kung Fu, Taekwondo, and Hapkido. Her martial art talent then earned Mao a cameo appearance in Bruce Lee's last film, 
the man with the claw of death. For her involvement, she received a proud sum of $100. After her marriage to Kelly Lai in 1974 and the birth of her daughter two years later, Mao decided to get out of the movie business and concentrate fully on her families. And with that, thanks for watching. Feel very welcome to hit the like and subscribe buttons to support us for free while staying up to date. Before you take a look at the other videos in the credits, we'd like to ask your opinion. Which martial artist influenced your childhood the most? And what was the best kung fu movie of all time? We look forward to your comments.